measuring and expressing enthalpy changes. So a burning match releases heat to its surroundings in all directions. How much heat does, does this re exothermic reaction release? You will learn to measure heat flow in chemical and physical processes by applying the concept of specific heat. So calorimetry, the precise measurement of the heat flow into or out of a system for a chemical and physical processes. In calorimetry, the heat released by the system is equal to the heat absorbed by its surroundings. Conversely, the heat absorbed by a system is equal to the heat released by its surroundings. So the heat of the system is equal to the change in the enthalpy, which is equal to the negative heat of the surroundings, which is equal to the negative mc delta t. I know that's a lot to take in. We'll do an example to clarify. Okay, so calorimetry, the insula insulated device used to measure the absorption or release of heat in chemical or physical processes is called a calorimeter. So the constant pressure calorimeter, the heat content of a system at constant pressure is the same as a property called the enthalpy of a system. So I'll write enthalpy abbreviated by the capital letter H So constant volume calorimeters. So calorimetry experiments can be performed at a constant volume using a bomb calorimeter. So to the right here, we see a bomb calorimeter. To the left, we see a nutrition label. And nutritionists use bomb calorimeters to measure the energy content of the food you eat. To see some of their data expressed in calories per serving, you can look at a nutrition label. According to the nutrition label below, each servings or each serving contains 140 calories. How many kilocalories is this? So there's a few conversion factors we need. And a few of them were on the previous video, two videos ago, I'm pretty sure. So I know one calorie, capital C, food calorie, is equal to one kilocalorie. which is equal to 1,000 calories, lowercase calories. And there's two more. We have one joule is equal to 0 0.2390 calories and 4.184 joules is equal to one lowercase calorie. So the problem said We're going to start with 1,400 uh, food calories. And we're going to go to kilojoules. So, Okay, so now kilocal we're in calories, and I'll do I'll take a long approach here. So in one kilocalorie, I have one calorie. And I know I have a thousand lowercase calories in one kilocalorie. Now I could you get to my joule. So I know in one joule, I have 0 0.2390 calories. And I want to go to kilojoules. So I know in one kilojoule, I have a thousand joules. 140 times 1,000 
divided by 0 0.2390, divided by 1,000. I have 585.77 kilojoules. So now, I have an example here, enthalpy change in a calorimetry experiment. So when 25 milliliters of water containing 0.025 moles of HCl at 25 degrees is added to 200, or 25 milliliters of water containing 0.025 moles of NaOH at 25 degrees Celsius in a foam cup calorimeter, a reaction occurs. Calculate the enthalpy change in kilojoules during this reaction if the highest temperature observed is 32 degrees Celsius. Assume the densities of the solutions are one gram per milliliter. All right, so a lot of information there. We'll break this down and we'll make it make sense. So we know our specific heat of our water. 4.18. Our, our final volume, since we have 25 from HCl, and 25 from NaOH, we're gonna have 50 milliliters. We have an initial temperature of, we had here, 25 degrees Celsius, and our final is 32. So our change in temperature is seven degrees Celsius. And our density of solution is one gram per milliliter. All right, so now, first thing I need to do, I need to find my mass. And since they give me this density, I'm going to use it. So I have 50 milliliters. So one gram over one milliliter, and it gives me 50 grams. So now my formula, delta H is equal to negative MC delta T. Delta H equals negative 50 put this in parentheses, times 4.18 times 7. So I'm going to get negative 1463 joules. I want to change those to kilojoules. And I'll get 1.46 kilojoules. All right, so now, thermochemical equations. So in a chemical equation, the enthalpy change for a reaction can be written as either a reactant or a product. So a chemical ch equation that includes the enthalpy change is called a thermochemical equation. And the heat of reaction is the enthalpy change for the chemical equation exactly as it is written. So we see here, this exothermic reaction of calcium oxide and water. We know it's exothermic because we have a negative sign, negative delta H, and this can be considered a product, that delta H value. In this decomposition of sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, the carbon dioxide released in the reaction causes a cake to rise while baking. So, since it's a positive delta H, we're gonna have an endothermic process. Okay, so just one more time. We see our exothermic process. We're gonna have a negative delta H. 
endothermic process will have a positive delta H. Okay, so an example of this. So using the thermochemical equation in figure 17.7b on page 515, which you don't have to worry about that, I'm going to give you that, we're going to calculate the amount of heat in kilojoules required to decompose 2.24 moles of NaHCO3. All right, so... Our equation... All right, so we want to calculate the heat here of in kilojoules of NaHCl3. And we're given 2.24 moles of it. So we have 2.24 moles of NaHCl3. So we know our heat, 129 kilojoules. Now we need to look at our NaHCl3. And it's typically going to be over one mole if our coefficient's one. But since we have a two in front, it's going to be over two moles of NaHCl3. Now with these types of problems, you might be giving your starting value in grams. You might have to go from grams to moles, and then you could use your heat. So 2.24. times 129 divided by 2 and we get 144.48 kilojoules all right so So does the result make sense? And we're here. So it says because the delta H is equal to 129 kilojoules, refers to the decomposition of two moles of NaHCl3, the decomposition of 2.24 moles should absorb about 10% more heat than 129 kilojoules, or slightly more than 142. The answer of 144 is consistent with this estimate. So, here are some values, 17, table 17.2, where it just talks about heat of combustion. All right, and we know our combustion reactions from our types of chemical reaction unit. So, the heat of combustion is the heat of reaction for the complete burning of a one mole of substance. So, if we look in this, this picture here, the combustion of natural gas is an exothermic reaction. As bonds in methane, the main component of natural gas, and oxygen are broken and bonds in carbon dioxide and water are formed, large amounts of energy are released. And this concludes our video on measuring and expressing entropy change.